invading the fourth realm of Ma'an. The rebel grandmasters Azrael and Magdael took most of the region before laying siege to the capital city, where the Archangel Michael refused every opportunity to escape, instead vowing to fight until the end. Eventually, the rebels got past their defenses and charged through the final gate, allowing Lucifer to face off against his old adversary. Engaging in single combat, Michael was swiftly defeated and offered a chance to join the rebellion with the title of Elect One, second in authority to the Lightbringer, but the Archangel refused. Believing death was too lenient a punishment, Lucifer cleaved off his wings to place on his standard and sent Michael back to the faithful, bloody and broken, as a warning of their impending doom. With the rebels taking Ma'an, they secured 700 million prisoners, of which 10% were convinced to switch sides, while the rest were executed. Following their defeat in Shekakim, Anakel and Samuel retreated to the fifth realm of Makan, where they took charge of their defenses in anticipation of the rebel Grand Masters, who soon arrived with a great host. Realizing the enemy was chiefly interested in taking the Mountains of Metal, which held a passageway to the sixth realm of Zabul, Anakel and Samuel concentrated their efforts on defending this region. Fighting a vicious, bloody battle, the faithful commanders won some measure of redemption for their defeat in Shekakim, holding their ground and denying victory to the rebels. Though they failed to take control of the Mountains of Metal in Makan, the Grand Master Bethel found another way into the sixth realm of Zabul, where his army faced off against the faithful Sakael and Uriel, who rallied their forces to defend the holy mountains of El Adonai, determined to withstand the onslaught approaching. Despite taking the rest of the realm, Bethel's forces were halted by Sakael, who led his chariot legions on the ground while Uriel soared above with blade bow and fire arrows. Doing so much damage to the enemy, they successfully held the line and remained in control of the Holy Mountains. Their victory, which allowed part of Zebul to remain in control of the faithful, was largely due to Uriel, one of the greatest warriors in creation, who rained death upon the rebels from the skies above, earning his nickname as the Fire of El. Moving against the Seventh Realm Aravoth, the rebel Grand Masters Asakel and Guel laid siege to the stairwell gate, which led to the large white throne of El Adonai, the most important region needed to declare victory and reign supreme across Shamayim. Yet the stairwell gate was guarded by the titanic, eight-winged obsidian seraph Kassel, an angel of immense power and skill, considered the greatest warrior in creation after the Lightbringer. Despite a prolonged siege, Asakel and Guel were unable to defeat Kassel, and so Aravoth remained unconquered throughout the conflict until most of the fighting throughout the rest of Shamayim was finished, allowing Lucifer, Matmanel, Magdael, Azrael, and Bezaleel to arrive with reinforcements. Ready to defend his realm with every ounce of his strength, Kassel engaged Lucifer in single combat, enduring a long, bloody battle which lasted 400 million years, until the chief prince at last secured victory, granting his opponent the chance to surrender and join the rebellion. When Kassel refused, Lucifer pierced his chest using the Seraph's own spear and hurled him over the mountainside. His enemies defeated and Aravoth taken by the rebels, the Lightbringer transformed into a terrible beast with five heads, razor talons, great curved horns, and fangs sharper than steel, becoming Lucifer Seraphant in his moment of triumph. With the creator believed to have fled, Lucifer sat upon the large white throne and declared victory, but his joy was short-lived as the Almighty soon re-emerged in the form of a great winged lion tearing off his adversary's heads before consuming him whole. The lion then spewed forth the Lightbringer, who watched in horror as his assailant transformed into El Adonai. Realizing his conquest was all but defeated, Lucifer challenged the creator to single combat, which El Adonai accepted, naming the wounded Archangel Michael as his champion. Believing his victory was assured, Lucifer engaged and nearly defeated his enemy a second time, but before this could occur, El Adonai revitalized and empowered his champion, who then used his newfound strength to defeat Lucifer once and for all. 
with the Lightbringer bested, the Elect One came forth upon a chariot of fire, and with Michael at his side, swept over rebel forces, liberating the last faithful holdouts in Rakia, Makon, and Zibul to end the war. Though the armies of Lucifer were at a great advantage in the beginning of the conflict, by its conclusion only 30% of angels remained part of the rebellion, with 15% returning to the faithful, thereby replenishing their early losses, while another 15% chose neutrality. Yet even so, after 4 billion years of fighting and nearly a third of all angels' casualties, Lucifer's rebels were on the cusp of total victory until the creator at last displayed his power and dashed their delusions. With the war lost and his armies disbanded, Lucifer was taken captive but held in luxurious surroundings as the creator hoped he would eventually seek forgiveness for his many mistakes. Yet this did not occur, as Lucifer remained defiant until the end, vowing to remain the adversary and enemy of El Adonai for all eternity. Accepting his decision, the Creator gathered both the faithful and rebels before him to pronounce judgment, stripping Lucifer and his followers of their names to grant them new designations, before exiling them from Shamayim, doomed to dwell in the furthest reaches of the firmament, loathing each passing moment until the day of final judgment, when they would be cast into the eternal torment of Gehenna. As for the neutral angels, who did not participate in the war, they were sent to suffer in the flames of Tartarus until the time when they might be forgiven for failing to defend their creator. Lastly, there were those angels who rebelled but later repented and returned to the faithful. They were put to sleep for a time until El Adonai enacted the next phase of creation when they would become cosmic luminaries in the sky, awaiting the day of final judgment when their punishment might come to an end.